Welcome back to my real life series videos. Uh, this will be real life number 13. Um, before I start this though, I want to give everybody kind of a heads up. Uh, especially for my new new subs who are not real familiar with the real life series, maybe you ran, ran across this video. This is going to be um, a story about real life as it happened in reality. So if that makes any sense. I'm not going to candy coat anything, um, therefore there's going to be some foul language, and I don't usually use foul language in my videos, but um, there's going to be dialogue with certain people, and I want that dialogue to be um, as spot on accurate as it can possibly be, um, or at least that my memory will allow. So, you know, I, I just want to keep it real, and so that's, you know, hence the, uh, hence the title, Real Life. So. If you're sensitive about foul language, this is just a heads up that you know you may not want to watch these videos. So, having said that, I'm going to start off where I left you in real life number 11. And that was me telling you that there were things brewing in the land of the pinheads. <laughs> and if you notice, I put a couple of, of uh, pins in the, uh, in the voodoo down there, so <laughs> something's brewing. Um, and it sure is. Um, I'm going to introduce you um, to Pinhead. Now, I know that I have talked about Pinhead in previous videos, um, but I'm going to spotlight Pinhead because he really deserves that. <laughs> he may not think that, but, oh, he does. He deserves every bit of what I'm going to tell you. Um, now, I'm going to start from the very beginning uh, with Pinhead, which actually predates anything that was going on with the uh, with the Lambert situation with the Fritos uh, house and the property line and all that stuff and you know super trooper and yada 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 so this is actually when I first got done and now when I buy property um, one of the first things that I do is I hire a, a legal surveyor or licensed surveyor to survey out the property lines um, and the reason I do that is because it, it fits in with my philosophy and that is I do not want anything that does not belong to me. However, if it belongs to me, I want every bit of it. Okay, that's just my philosophy, you know, and, and, and I think that it's good words to live by. So I hire a surveyor, and at the time I hired the surveyor, he was, he was recommended, um, and uh, in fact, he was the county surveyor at the time. Um, <laughs> do I wish I would have used a different surveyor? Yeah, I do. However, having said that, you get what you get. So, I hire the surveyor. He's dragging ass. I've got this. This uh, I've got two tracts of land. There are actually three tracts of land that I need surveyed. Um, one was a large tract, which was 482 acres. Then there was another tract with well, actually um, a 50 acre tract that was over in the land of the Pinheads. And then another 40-acre tract. But anyway, we'll talk about the 50-acre tract. The 50-acre tract that was in the land of the Pinheads, which was basically up over on the other side of the mountain, uh, and it was um, adjointed by um, Pinhead. So at the time, I didn't even know who Pinhead was. <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I talked to my surveyor, and I'm like, look, I've got to head back up north, but I'd really like to be able to show that boundary of timber to uh, to a logger or two before I take off. Now, real quickly, when it comes to logging, there's two ways that you can sell timber. One is to sell it by the boundary, which is which basically means you flag your entire boundary of property and you and you sell it as a whole. So, for example, if you got 50 acres, and let's say it's choice prime timber, uh, it depends on the price of timber, which is really kind of shitty now, but back then it was a lot better. Oh, well, let's just say. A thousand dollars an acre, you could pretty much assume you're going to get. So that'd be fifty thousand dollars if you sold it uh, by the boundary. If you um, sold it in a different way, and the other way, I guess, to sell it would be to sell it uh, on a percentage, which is that basically you get paid by the sawmill a percentage of whatever particular load comes in that you know that day or that week or loads, I should say. So there's advantages to either way. The nice thing about selling it by the boundary is you get your money up front, but you're going to probably get a little bit less than you would have gotten if you sold it um, on a percentage. The downside to percentage is you've got to find a really honest logger, which, by the way, they are very difficult to come, come across. Um, 
because what will happen sometimes, or more often than not actually, if you're not there to be able to watch that timber leave that property and count those trucks, um, there's a very good chance that uh, maybe one or two trucks will go to the sawmill that you and the logger have agreed to, to, to work with and then the rest of the loads will go to a sawmill in another county that you don't even know about. So, But anyway, bottom line, I, I, I was working with the surveyor. The surveyor says to me one day, he says, look, he goes, I'm not going to be able to get the survey done before you have to go back up north. He goes, but I can get some, some basic boundary markers up there. You can show your loggers. They'll have a pretty good idea of the timber. At least give, you, give them a preliminary idea of what's going on as far as you know the timber goes. So whatever, whatever. Um, I, I was talking to a logger at that particular time, and I said, listen, I've got to head back up north. I said, but uh, my surveyor tells me that he's got some markings that you can, that you can uh, identify at least where this timber is at or give you a good idea where the timber is at. If you're interested in taking a quick look, uh, because uh, you know, otherwise you're gonna have to wait till I come back in about three weeks. And of course, he wanted to look at it now. So I said, I tell you what, I will, I will take you over uh, this, this actual. Really, they don't really call it a holler, but this road's called Levi Branch. I said, I'll take you over to to Levi Branch and show you where, where the surveyor says he's got some markings up, and um, and then you can give me a call in a week or so and let me know what you think about the timber. And uh, so. It was getting towards the evening, and I like to drive at night, so I wanted to cut out that night. Um, so the, the logger shows up at my house. Uh, we hop in my truck, and we head over to Levi Branch. And sure enough, you can see the tree. There's a tree where the, uh, the logger had, or not the logger, I'm sorry, the surveyor had marked off. So we pull into this driveway that's uh, right in front of this little shitty trailer, and um, we're sitting there, and I said, well, you know, okay, here's where the, the boundary starts. Supposedly, he's got some ribbons going up the mountain there. I said, then, of course, you know, you're going to take a right, and then you'll find out, you know, it, it, these loggers are used to this, so he's like, all right, no problem. While we're sitting there, all of a sudden, this, this truck comes whipping in behind us, and this guy jumps out. <laughs> Um, and he had another dude with him. I, I, I don't remember who that was now, but uh, this guy gets out, a little Weasley dude, um, just a, a little scrawled off bastard. He's just harping me. He's just, you sons of bitch, blah, blah, blah. What the fuck are you doing on my property? So I get out of my truck and I'm like, dude, um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I said, I'm just trying to show my logger where my property is at. And he said, that's not your fucking property. Blah, 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 blah. You need to get your fucking ass off my property by. And I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, dude's acting like a lunatic. <laughs> and I said, listen, I'm not trying to steal anything from you. I'm not trying to do anything out, uh, you know, outside of the realm of normalcy here. I said, my, you know, my name is Richard Hunter. I said, I've, I have 50 acre plot over here. I said, my, my surveyor marked it off. You can see where he put ribbons and paint. Well, your surveyor is fucking wrong. Your surveyor, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. I said, listen. I said, I'm, I'm heading back up north. I said, when I get back home, I will call my surveyor and try to work it out. I said, let's exchange phone numbers. And, you know, and by the way, I mean, dude was acting like a complete lunatic, which should have sent red flags up not to deal with this clown. But, you know, look, try, I'm just trying to get along. You know, just trying to get along. Same thing I had going on with uh, with Frito. I tried to get along with him, too. I always start out trying to get along with people. You know, and sometimes maybe that's my downfall, truthfully. So anyway, um, I exchanged my numbers with this guy who said his name was Mike Gregory. Okay? Later to find out that everybody called him Pinhead. And uh, for good reason, I might add. Um, anyway, so... You know, God, it's nine minutes already. Um, anyway, I head back home to up north to Toledo, and I called the surveyor, and I'm like, look, there's a problem. This dude named Mike Gregory, he just went off the deep end with me. I said, he seems kind of dangerous. I said, are you sure about where that corner's at? And he said, you know, I think I might have messed that up. Gregory called me, bitch, and he goes, let me get back with you on that. And I'm like, well, okay. So, anyway, it's 932 I'm going to let this go now, and then I'll come back to this uh, point in the story And uh, for would be oh, episode 14, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, stay tuned for more.